Wicked Ones. This is Jen. And this is Tara. And how are you today? I'm just doing all right. I can't complain today. It's okay. been a normal week. That's good. Normal yeah. is good considering we're in a pandemic still. Yeah. I'll take normal. I know. Normal for 2020. Does that count? Anytime you can say normal in 2020, <laughs> it like counts like times 10. Times 10. <laughs> times then 10. I'm totally winning this week. Yes. Good. Yes. I'm glad to hear. I uh, noticed some of the work on Instagram for us. Yeah. Our social I, social game presence. We're, I feel like we need to hire like a 15-year-old to come in and take gosh. over our Instagram page because I don't know what I'm doing no. I really don't understand Instagram I don't know because you know I know you're not a big fan of social media and I I'm trying really hard right now you are I'm proud of you thank you yeah I'm proud of you I feel like we'll figure it out we'll get there one day at a time we're not super savvy but we're learning and again I feel like the kids are seeing us learn new things and try new things and it's it's setting a good example that you just you're never done learning you're always trying to improve so I agree I think well the girls know how passionate I am about our podcast so they're always excited to hear and if I say I'm working on something or anytime they see me out with my computer are you working on the podcast what are you doing what's this what's that so it's definitely a good thing I I do um you know I'm not a fan of social media but I am excited to dive into social media on behalf of the podcast Oh, absolutely. That's what makes it exciting. Right. We want to hear from our listeners. We want to know, we want to know all about them. We want to get to know the people who enjoy true crime like we do and maybe appreciate our personality and the way that we do it, right? Our discussion and and not everybody, not everybody's for everybody. There's so many different ones out there. I've listened to several. Some I really like and some I can't get through them, but... No. What do they say? You can be the juiciest orange in the bunch, but somebody <laughs> doesn't like oranges? Somebody doesn't like oranges. And that, it might, that might be way off, but that's what it reminds me of. I and that's what, okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So we're trying. I mean, I I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm learning. I'll I'll do some research. We'll get there. We'll yeah. get there. Um, have you seen any good shows lately? I feel like the weather's going to yeah. start to turn soon. We have our big day coming out. Oh, yes, we do. Our birthday celebration. So for our birthday celebration, we are going to watch TV and eat snacks. <laughs> Just all the two of us. Long. All day. One of the best days of my life. Oh, my God. <laughs> for I can't when wait. I can't we wait. watched uh, Sharp Objects. Oh, yes. And we ate chilies takeout <gasps> while laying down on air mattresses. <laughs> <In> <laughs> You're lost. One of the that best days of my amazing. life. We binged the hell out of that show, and it was so, so good. So Gillian, good. oh my gosh, she is, a, she's an amazing writer. I don't even know how the guys kept the kids out of the house. I don't even know how that's so. That's when we were moving back from that's South Carolina, and we were with living us with for you for a little while. Yeah, they and, took them for a walk. I think, they took and then for a walk. somehow they ended up at like Buffalo Wild Wings. For I don't know. They were gone, and we just kept on going episode after episode next, after episode. Next, we didn't get out of our pajamas. Best day of my life. It was amazing. I can't. So wait. we're gonna recreate that day in honor of our birthdays. What the heck do we watch? I don't even know what's out there anymore. I have <gasps> zero time. So Billy and I started watching. I want to say it's called Reckoning. I don't think there's like a the. It's on Netflix. Reckoning, and we watched two episodes maybe a month or two ago, and have not been able to get any further. And I am dying to see what happens. It's really good so far. I mean, I'm so I never really did get into the whole. And this, I'm probably gonna lose people right here. I never really did it again. True Blood. Everybody said, "Oh, Terry, you gotta see True Blood. It's right up your alley. You're gonna love it. It's amazing." And I tried to watch it maybe three times, and I just couldn't. Maybe it was just whatever was going on in my life at the time. I don't know. I don't want to say. There's a lot. I mean, it has a pretty big following. People love that show. But anyway, the guy, the guy that plays the bartender, the guy who owns the bar, I feel like maybe his name was Sam, and he might have been a werewolf eventually. I don't oh, know. I don't know anything about True Blood. I, I don't I, watch TV, people. I apologize. No, but he's in this... He's in the Netflix series. I just recognized him from that. He plays like this teacher. Oh. Um, count, no, he's not a teacher. He's a counselor. He's, he's kind of like the guy the seniors go to to try to figure out what they want to do in life and, and all that. And, of course, the, the girls flirt with him pretty hardcore. 
first Ooh. couple episodes. And there's murders. Like, these girls are... I mean, hopefully I'm not spoiler. I've only seen two episodes, so I don't you know what's going to happen. can't too much away. Right. But there's, like, this, you know, detective who's really into... The, he was trying to solve all these cases from before, and he's got all these tattoos all over him from all these girls that went missing who had, like, tattoos removed after they were... And I don't believe oh. any of them were assaulted sexually, if I remember correctly. They were just strangled and, and killed. Not just, but you know what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so everybody looks like a suspect so far. And you're going, oh, wow. oh my God, who's it? So I can't wait to, I can't wait to see more of, I want, maybe we'll watch that one. Cause maybe. I don't see us watching it ever again. Yeah. Cause we have zero yeah. time. We also, uh, we have to finish Big Little Lies. Oh, Big Little Lies. Wait, what was the fire one? The book I read, Fire. Oh, Little Fire's Everywhere. Did you ever finish the book? No. Oh, damn I'm it, maybe, Tara. How are I, we going to watch the show? Uh, so, unless you finish that first, Big Little Lies, we need to finish Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, we haven't even started that. Haven't There's started so that. many There's on the so list. Many. Okay, what, and what how should to get we watch? With murder? So many news. Oh, I never did get past the season I haven't season finished three. it yet either because I only am, yes. I only allow myself to watch it when I run on the treadmill. And we all know my pants are very tight because I have not been running. <laughs> well. There hasn't been a lot of running lately, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on. Oh, well, too bad for you. We're going to have. Um, what was it? What did you call it? A snack mask? No snack masks allowed. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a big sign up oh. with a picture of a snack mask with like the no sign through it. There you go. No snack mask. No snack allowed. mask. So we'll have to make a. We'll, we'll have just to have a smorgasbord anyway. We have, anyway. To, we have to decide what we're gonna eat, what we're gonna drink, gonna what we're gonna good. watch. Mm-hmm. So that's ooh, uh, people, all ten of you out there listening right now, <laughs> <laughs> please hit us up on Instagram and tell us what to watch or any snacks ooh, or snacks. drinks, recipes, any recipes in general. Yeah, agreed. Really but anyways, okay, enough about that. Oh, I could talk about snacks and food know, forever. And TV um, shows that I never get to watch. But tell me, what do you what do you have for me today? Okay, okay, here we go. We're going to get into it. Um, Well, since it's Halloween week and we're continuing, this is our last Halloween-themed story. Man, I did... I've been deep diving all week into all sorts of cases. You have. Right? I just couldn't decide... Um, but I'm pretty happy with the case that I have today, and I think it's really interesting because it's kind of like true crime meets urban legend meets conspiracy theory meets da da. So this one's I could I I better get started because I have no idea how long it's gonna take me. So <laughs> here we go. Today I'm gonna tell you about the smiley face killers. Have you heard of this? I've heard of the smiley face killers, but I've never looked into it in depth. Okay, so, so I'm sure this is going to be full of all kinds of good information. Oh man, there was so um, there was so much information that I didn't really know what to include and what not to include. So I, ch- you know me, I like to tell you everything, but I couldn't I couldn't fit it all in here. So I may be throwing. You know how I just go, oh, side note. Uh, I'm, I have yeah. a lot of side notes, but that's okay. Um, I've yeah. never really looked into it that much because I felt like it was so lengthy. So. This is actually something that made me think of Blacklist, um, because this group, this organization, this, uh, this is what these detectives that I'm going to be talking about say are the most dangerous domestic terrorist group in the U.S., and somebody needs to be paying attention, is what they said about this group, and it made me, you know, basically what, what they're saying is it's like this cabal of sadistic serial killers preying on young men. Right? Hunting from the shadows. And for a couple of decades, which is a really long time. That's a very long time to be doing that. A really long time. So, is it one hell of a coincidence? Linking these seemingly accidental drownings of what someone call the future leaders of America or the best of the best is what they've determined. This is kind of the... Oh my gosh, this is so blacklist. Right? Don't you see mm-hmm. it? I see the connection. I, I, I just, in my mind, I was picturing Raymond Reddington mm-hmm. going after this. Mm-hmm. This is the next cabal, right? Yep. So tonight I'm going to tell you the story that led me down the path that really sometimes felt unbelievable, very conspiracy theory-like, and other times it kind of made me think, holy shit, there are too many coincidences at play. These guys must really be onto something. So I kind of waffled back and forth, and you might too, but I really think this is a story that needs to be told. Um, if for nothing other than to educate our young people today on what it means to just be safe, travel in groups, buddy system, guys, you know what? It's not just girls that need to pay attention to their drinks anymore at parties and bars. GHB is one of the factors that we'll discuss 
And they do believe that all of their male victims were given GHB at one point before they were taken. So I don't think guy, I, you know what? I'm guys not gonna say I don't about think. it. Guys don't ever worry about it. Women. We've have. had this conversation. We have. We'll have to say this for the end of the episode, but how differently we have to travel. So differently. We can even say it now. It's okay. Women, as women, we we have to watch everything. We have to watch our drinks. We have to make sure we have meals when we go for a walk. We have to make sure... No, but I mean even traveling, right? Like, you have to yeah. make sure that the Uber is certified. Did you take a picture of the license plate? Does the license plate match what was on your Is the guy's name who he says he is. Yeah. And... Are you going the right direction? Are you... Is he stopping somewhere else? Is he talking to somebody? I just... Yeah. Yeah. There are so many things that we are trained to do, and guys just hop right in. And yeah. And you even when we you have your luggage. Remember when we went to the... Oh, yes. The crime... Uh, crime con? Oh, what was it called? Uh, yeah. House on the tip of my tongue, but remember we were like, "Oh yeah, we're here for the crime kind of event." Da da da, and then the bubble boys started talking to us about how he watched the Netflix oh, episode yes. about the rape and the murders, and then he realized what he said and how scary it was, and his eyes got really big. And yes. we're like, "No, it's okay, it's okay." Oh, I think he was sweating in our room because he was literally in our hotel room talking about murder, and then he realized, "Oh shit, I'm in a room with two girls <laughs> talking and about murder alone." <laughs> yeah. When all they asked for asked for was a coffee pot. Yeah. <laughs> no tip for you. Right. But <laughs> even when we were traveling, mm-hmm. I felt like, I feel like Tara's a target, you guys. She's so nice. Uh, I had to pull yes. her away from at least a dozen conversations. One, definitely a serial killer. <laughs> Dead people were in his mattresses. I don't care what anyone will ever say. But it's that true. Could be for it's another true. Day. I'm sorry. I, this is why, this is why I travel in Paris and Jen is my, she's scary, you guys. Like she, <laughs> I, I trust her with my life. So, every guy needs a gen. You need a gen with you. Guys, get your gen. You need one. <laughs> totally. So, you know, so I decided tonight, there were so many victims, you guys. Supposed victims, I will say, because it's it hasn't, it's, it's still a theory. It still hasn't been proven. But, since it's Halloween, I'm going to start with one of the victims that you might be interested in learning about that has a possible connection with these so-called smiley face killers. Unfortunately, I won't have time to talk about all of them because as I mentioned, it used to be a group of about 40 plus that they thought um, fit this, I don't want to say category, but into the investigation that they're looking at, um, the profile of the victims and and how they were found in um, accidental drownings and things like that. But it's now escalated to more than 350 plus. And they now believe that these murders could also be happening in Europe, England, France, and Canada and other places, which is crazy to me. Just crazy. Um, Again, there's a lot of things in this that will sound crazy and you'll be, you'll dismiss it right away, but then we'll reel you back in and you'll go, wait a minute, that's, how could that be? Oh, I'm so excited. (sighs) It's crazy. So let me just, throw my sources out there really quick before I, I, I always like to cover my sources, but I just want to credit Oxygen, Wikipedia, Medium, The Daily Beast, CrimeInvestigation.com, Rolling Stone, and um, also an interview I listened to with the retired NYPD detectives fueling this theory and still working the case. Uh, Kevin Gannon, Anthony Duarte, and Mike Donovan were guests on Not Another True Crime podcast, where the host asked so many of the same questions that I had when I was researching, and I really wanted to share as much as I could gather. So let's go back to 2002. It's Halloween night in Minneapolis, Minnesota. A bunch of college friends from the University of Minnesota are out. They're dressed up in costume and they went to the Lone Tree Bar and Grill. Chris Jenkins gets kicked out of the bar, supposedly because he had spilled a drink on the front of his pants and the bouncers took this as a sign of this guy's very intoxicated and we don't want him in here anymore, so they kick him out. So Chris is now outside in 20 degree weather with no coat because he's wearing his Halloween costume, has no pockets. His girlfriend in the bar has his cell phone and wallet. He doesn't have a car either because they drove, you know, they drove together. Another friend drove and he didn't, he didn't have any mode of transportation to get back home. He was last seen supposedly heading north toward home, but when he doesn't show up and he doesn't contact anyone, he's reported as missing. So his friends and his girlfriend are still inside? Yes. Okay, just checking. I know. So, it, and from what I read, I don't know if maybe they didn't know that he got kicked out. You know, it could have been a situation Anything where... Anything can happen. I'm not judging. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. They're all on the dance floor. They're doing whatever. They're going up to go. And then before you know it, 15, 20 minutes goes by, and this guy's already deciding, I, I just got gotta lost go in a concert for like two hours. Oh. We can talk about that another time, but... <laughs> 
I was very angry. <laughs> I yeah. was I was on a rampage looking for you. Yeah. So, I mean, it can happen. Yeah. I'm not Because judging. I know too many stories, and I was terrified. Mm-hmm. I needed to find you ASAP. So, yes, those... I get it. Like, that missing time can be... It can seem like it's short, but really it's very long for the people. And it can happen to anybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, four long months later, February 27, 2003, a body is spotted wedged in between branches of a fallen tree in the upper portion of the St. Anthony Falls Dam. Still wearing a Native American costume, which was still neatly tucked in and slip-on moccasins still attached to his feet. Okay, so he's wearing the same costume. It's been... Four months later. Four months, right. His family doesn't buy the official cause of death as undetermined accidental drowning, so they hire a private investigator. The story has changed now from he was kicked out to he left on his own. And actually, it from what I read, the bar, they put a gag order on everybody and told nobody to talk. But I'm sure it was it just to protect. Matter. Whether was, he left on his own or he right. was kicked out, it still happened. Right. Um, there was a little bit more to that story, but I just didn't think it was relevant to what I was talking about. So we're just going to leave that out. But the story was changed. So retracing his steps, they find that the security cameras from the Federal Reserve Bank, and there were two of them, facing Hennepin Bridge, which he would have to cross on his way home, they did not show any sign of Chris. He he didn't go that way. He wasn't so there. So he must have been picked up. That's what. Possibly. So they bring in canines and two different bloodhounds that track his scent from the Lone Tree Bar and Grill to Times Square uh, Pizza and Subs across from the bar. Four months later? Four months later. They track his scent? Apparently. Okay. I mean, I guess, I'm, I'm guessing you can probably... I don't... I'm sorry. I shouldn't interrupt. I'm listening. No, that's okay. That's really a good thought, and I never really... That's a long time. Four months? Winter? That is a long time. I never really thought about that, but apparently the dogs were amazing because they (laughs) tracked his scent. (laughs) So um, so they track his scent from Lone Tree Bar and Grill to Times Square Pizza and Subs across from the bar and then to a parking garage next door, and they stop at stalls 89 and 90 where the scent ends. It just so happens this is where one of the bouncers that night parked his car, and the hound also finds that they smell Chris on one of the cars that had been parked there that night as well. Investigating the scene further, they find traces of blood, a feather fragment, and red string that could very well have been a part of his headband that he was wearing that night. Where did they find this? It just said investigating the scene. So Somewhere in the parking garage. Four months later. Right? It's possible. It's winter time. Who's poking around? Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, so witnesses did say that they saw a group of 10 or more people attacking someone outside the pizza shop as well, but no one could verify if it was Chris or not. Which this made me think Bystander of the, effect. I thank you. Look, I wrote it down. Bystander effect. Mm-hmm. You didn't, you didn't yeah. go to see if anybody was okay. You yeah. didn't call the police. Mm-hmm. You didn't look into it. Why, people? Why are you not helping? Mm-hmm. Call. Do something. I know. I mean, I don't expect you to do it if you're, like, uh, two small women walking and you see a group of ten thugs. No, like you and I walking in the city, but we could at least call the police or alert authorities. Correct. There's always something that you can do. So, the medical examiner's report shows that his blood alcohol content was 0.12. So, I mean, past the legal limit, but still not too terrible. Not, like, fall down drunk, right? The report also noted that it was very strange that Chris appeared almost posed with his arms across his chest when he was found. Typically, victims in the water are found with their arms at their sides. The costume, as well, as I mentioned, was neatly tucked in, and he still had his slip on moccasins. Moccasins. (laughs) It's also 1947, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we travel in time as well. Um, So he he still had on his slip on moccasins as well, and... Nothing had fallen off, which is very strange. Everything's tucked in, in place. It just appeared that he was dead, and then full rigor mortis set in when he was placed into the water. Okay, so this is what this is what they're thinking. So, now Chris Jenkins was a lacrosse player. He was very active. He had games and practices just a few days before he went missing, yet the family found it very odd that there was no bruising on his body. This is what made them think that maybe he had been held for a few days. I was just going to say that. Before he was killed. Right, because... But how was... What was the form of murder? 
Well, the, um, they ruled it an accidental drowning. So, huh. yeah, like undetermined cause. Um, finally, hydrologists who actually study the Mississippi don't believe that his body could have been in the water for four months without being found by people walking by. The river had not been frozen until January that year, and the area where his body um, was found had been searched for many weeks after he was missing. So the fact that nobody saw his body just well, seems Well, he was on, like, branches, you said, mm-hmm. in the dam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's where he was found. Well, and if he was there that long, wouldn't there be, like, bloating and... Probably. I didn't really get into exactly what the decomp was on this. But they I felt mean, like he obviously wasn't there that long. That's what they felt. Well, they just... Right? They, so the investigators felt that it looked suspicious. The police and the ME at the time... They ruled it an accidental death. So this is something that they kind of look back into. I mean, the family wasn't buying it. You'll see. So Chris's death is only one of the suspicious deaths looked, um, being looked into by retired NYPD detectives Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte. Kevin Gannon first started connecting the dots back in 1997. He was the supervisor in charge of the Patrick McNeil case back in New York, a 23-year-old senior at Fordham University who disappeared after a night of drinking with friends on February 17th in a Manhattan bar known as the Dapper Dog. He was last seen getting ready to leave the bar and head home, but no one actually saw him leave. He was just there one minute, gone the next. Two months later, despite many search efforts, sadly, Patrick's half-naked body was found floating face up, which is odd in itself. They say that usually a body in the water is face down in the New York Harbor, but it was found 12 miles away from where he was last seen. 12 miles. That's really far. During the interview I listened to, they said that the Harbor Patrol didn't think there was any way a body could have floated that far. It would have had to have been driven. Just everything that it had. I remember they were talking about that the, that area had never been dredged up, and in, that river is full of barges and pieces of houses, and it's it's an it's a waterway that they used to use to transport construction material and things like that. Plus, there's a hydraulic dam. They were just talk, they were just saying there's so many so many factors of the body. Even if it did float 12 miles down, it would have been banged up. You know, there would have been there would have been something something there so it would have got hung up on something right or cut or you know just there would have been evidence that it had had traveled so even with his suspicions on this case it was closed by the department but um it was closed as an undetermined drowning kevin still had questions and so did his grieving family and his body decomp definitely didn't match up to the emmy's timeline so being found face up as i mentioned was very strange how his body traveled that, you know, that long of a distance. And so he promised the Jenkins he would find answers. And he's still trying to keep that promise all these years later. That was 1997. I hadn't even graduated high school then. Is he already graduated? It's a very long time to be looking into all of this. But but I understand because they're, everything is just fueled by more cases and more cases and more cases that keep popping up. So let me tell you. After new witness information came forward four years later, the family was able to get Chris's case reopened for investigation as a homicide. So it was around this time, in 2003, Gannon called up Anthony Duarte, another officer from his days in the NYPD, and they decided to take a trip to Minneapolis to investigate the details once again of this case. And they start noticing, at this time, a cluster of highly intelligent, good-looking, popular, athletic, college-age men, with all with promising futures, basically what he called the best of the best. They're disappearing, only to be found in bodies of water later and classified as accidental drownings. Many of these young men attended colleges along the Interstate 94 corridor in the Midwest, in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa, which they also found to be a strange coincidence. Little did they know, at the same time across the country, a professor of criminal justice in St. Cloud State University, Douglas Lee Gilbertson, was also looking at a few drownings that happened close by and coming to a similar conclusion. One of the cases that started it all for him was Chris Jenkins' death. Gilbertson says that at first, he thought the murders could possibly be connected to the theory of the I-94 killer. 
Um, and later that year, the investigators find each other and link up. But it's crazy that he's over here and he's studying. And I, I believe he mentioned something in the interview about his students. And it made me think of when we were at Crime Con and they had those professors that were there helping out and they brought in those students. Yeah, they're law students that were... And that was amazing that. and it's so such a cool, cool idea, right? They were so passionate about the case. They couldn't wait to take it on. They knew every witness. They knew every piece of paper inside and out. They were so passionate about it. Especially when there's certain people in your group. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't believe that. I don't even know if we're allowed to say anything about that. I don't that. know if we're allowed to say anything about that. So we'll leave that to another so we'll day. Just... But yes, yes, I agree. I think that law students like that are just, they're just ready to get dirty. They are. And so I believe that's what he said. He's a criminal uh, justice professor at this college. And they were looking into it and they were thinking, huh, this is really odd. And they didn't have any clue that the investigators from the NYPD, the retired detectives, were coming to the same That's cool. The same idea. So after they link up, they start working together. And um, in all, between that time and 2008, the investigators say they connected these bizarre drowning deaths to at least 45 college-age men in 11 states. It was their belief that the men were drugged with GHB after leaving parties or bars where they had been drinking and their bodies were slipped or tossed into the water and making it appear as if they'd drowned. Which is just insane. Well, from what I read, according to them, they said it's possible that the killer or killers, and I think we can all agree there's not one person that's doing this. It would have to be multiple if it was. A group. A group. Mm. And the motive could just be that these guys were privileged. They were... You know, they were the best of the the best, as he should say. They were athletic. They were popular. They were smart. Um, I believe I read that Chris had nearly perfect GPA. He was on the lacrosse team, and he was... They were all heading for a bright future. Crazy. Not the type of people that you would think Do they come from uh, privileged families, or are they... I didn't read that part. I don't know if that... Would be something that would be something to look at or look into, but but yeah, they were just all around really good, really good kids heading for great things. All of them, all of them were, which is just even just it's just so sad. Um, and they theorized they were all targeted and murdered by either an individual, like I said, or a group of killers, which seems more highly probable because there's no way one person would be able to put something like this together. There's no way. Um, and because some of the murders happen on the same day in different states. So there's no way they could... There's no way just drunk kids are wandering into bodies of water. Mm-mm. That's what I think. That's what I think, too. It just seems really... Okay, so I'll just keep going, and then you can tell me. You can tell me what you think. Um, and because they discovered smiley face graffiti near several locations... So of the 40 at the time, I believe there were 12 locations where they found the bodies were dumped into the water and they found the smiley faces in graffiti nearby or where they thought they had been dumped. So where they had been dumped or where they had been found, there was either connection with this smiley face. So and smiley faces are similar? So no, none of them were, that was, and that's one of the things that people throw a wrench into the whole you know, the whole Sorry, I just was No, curious. no, no, that's good. That's a good question. It was one that um, I had and I looked into it. Oh, here, look. I, I printed out a picture for... Oh, I didn't print out the other picture. I had a picture of some of the smiley faces, and they're not all the same. They're they're different. They're different colors. This this one right down here... But if here, it's different murders, it could be different... It could be different signatures from yeah. different people. Yeah. Not everybody's going to draw or do the same smiley face. That does kind of throw a wrench into it that it wasn't found in every single case, but you have to think, too, not all of these cases are going to be... What they are they all they are. Caucasian? I want to say um probably ninety nine percent were were Caucasian males. Yes, you are correct about that, and that's obviously not everyone. But that was a picture that I printed out from uh, the Daily Beast, I think. So now this theory has been met with quite a bit of skepticism. As I said, many believe that this is turning into an urban legend of sorts, and the FBI actually came out the very next day after the media ran the theory by the public. They stated, and I quote, they had not developed any evidence substantiating the theory that these deaths are the work of a serial killer or serial killers. Instead, they state, 
the vast majority of these instances appear to be alcohol-related drownings. So they don't, they don't want to go there. Understandable. I do remember in one of the interviews that uh, Gannon had said that he mentioned it in New York, you know, and I don't know if it was after he was retired or while he was still working, and they said, please don't go there. We cannot have another Son of Sam serial killer out there. It's too expensive. It's too, we don't want public panic. And I think that there was just multiple reasons for it, but they, they didn't want to, they didn't even want him to go there with it. And I mean, I, I can see from why their they point would of view, it. I understand. Yes. I do. Yes. So two years later, as well, the nonprofit Center for Homicide Research in Minneapolis released a study titled "Drowning the Smiley Face Murder Theory." Okay, they were they were adamant about putting the kibosh on this one. They cited 18 points to debunk the theory, including the lack of physical evidence of a serial killer, noting that bodies were found um, without signs of torture, strangulation, or blunt force trauma, and they point to the fact that homicidal drowning in itself is an incredibly rare crime. True. As for the presence of GHB, this can't be proven in their eyes that the drug wasn't taken recreationally or willingly, and there's always the matter of body decomp to consider as well. So, okay, all right, I see it. One huge point to debunk from this study as well was the fact that there was so much variation, like you mentioned, in size and color and style of the smiley faces, and some appeared to have been painted long before the deaths occurred, along with the fact that a smiley face is the most common graffiti tag found in the national database. I get it. Whenever the kids are like, here, mom, doodle this or whatever, I like absentmindedly Immediately do a smiley face. Draw a smiley face. So does my, my kids even do it. Yeah. It's either a smiley face or a flower. Those are my go-to when I can't think of anything mm-hmm. else to do. So I, I see it. And, you know, another another point, too, that I'll throw in here is another side note. But when I was listening to the investigators talk about it, one of the uh, investigators, and I don't think it was Gannon, because I was trying to differentiate their voices. It's funny, because uh, when the one guy talked, it sounded just like Joe Pesci. So I just kept picturing Joe Pesci talking to me. <laughs> That's <'cause>, awesome. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there he is. Um, and the, so the I think it might have been Duarte that said that, um, you know what? In an area like New York, sure, you can probably go in a block radius or a five block radius and you'll find a smiley face. But he said they're finding these in areas that were not like New York, places like La Crosse, Wisconsin, and other smaller areas that that really graffiti isn't as common. So it's also a statistic that they point out, too, that the leading cause of death in white males under the age of 44 are accidents and suicide, respectively. The men ages 18 to 34 are also most likely to binge drink, and then it's twice as common um, among men as it is women, the binge drinking. So um, they also claim from a report released in 2010 in La Crosse, Wisconsin, one of the hubs of the cluster of the alleged murders, that between the fall of 2006 and February 2010, police and foot patrols stopped at least 65 intoxicated people from approaching local rivers late at night. Yep. So I believe that too. We hung out there. Yeah, yeah. And just because you're approaching the river doesn't mean you're going to go jump in. No, but it doesn't mean you're going to jump in, but you could fall in. Oh, absolutely. You in. Like, you we used right to go by the river all the time after we had been drinking, and then someone was upset. They'd go sit by the water. So oh, you were God. part of that 65. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm totally part of you it. You added to that statistic. I totally They added told to you to statistic. leave. They were like, don't go by the water. Yeah, I know. Everyone see it. went by the water. I can totally see it. I, I, I can. I can. You're right. There's the GHB. Now, were they able, and if you don't know this, that's okay. That's okay. I, like, are they able to determine if everybody... So, like, this is where it got a little murky for me, and I didn't put a ton of stats in there, but I remember reading something that they thought they found GHB in almost 90 to 99%, and I'm not quoting that because, again, I didn't write it down. And I don't know if that really would even high number. That's a really high number, and I don't know if that's but something that it's not something that's tested breaks for down yeah. oh. as the body decomposes, okay. or right. or during decomp does it produce, produce some similar chemical that seems to be to GHB, GHB or will show up as GHB? Correct. Correct. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Those are very good questions, and I should look into that and maybe Sorry. do like a no. That's totally like. That's way out there, but I was very it's curious. It's funny because it's something that I thought about and I didn't, I, it's one of those things that I just didn't have time to look into when I was putting everything together and I had forgotten about that. But no, that's really, really good. And I remember thinking, okay, well, how do they, if they don't, 
GHB isn't something they normally test for right. in a toxicology so then report. How do they know that? So the, these guys got permission later to, to test later. Sometimes they would have the ME do it or the parents would um, request samples for them so that gotcha. they could have it tested. So they did have all, you know, most of these tested. But that's a good question. We'll have to look into that a little bit more. I don't know the answer to that, but I wish we could talk to that ME from Chicago because he was amazing. He had right? all the oh answers. Oh my gosh, he was so good. Oh my good. gosh, he was so good. So good. I yeah. wish he, we had him on our speed dial. One day. <laughs> One day. Hey. One day. You will be a guest here. Um, on the flip side, the investigators are not concerned with the naysayers of their theory. Gilbertson says, and I quote, they don't even have a clue what we have. And he is referring to the GHB levels, the lividity, insect presence, which should not be possible if they drowned the night they went missing. Presence of smiley face graffiti, and they mention they have 13 other symbols and signatures they have attributed to the sinister group. They claim that they have the support of many officers and detectives that have reached out to them. They just say, you guys are onto something. We know it. Keep going or giving them their support and when I mentioned those 13 other symbols and signatures they're keeping tight-lipped about a lot of things because I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to one of their hopes was they were going to go into oxygen I believe January is when everything was supposed to and it probably did I didn't watch everything from oxygen I mostly read oxygen.com but there was a series a six-part series, I believe, that talked about the smiley face murders. I didn't quite get into the whole being able to sit and watch We're gonna episodes have to put that on of it. List. We might have to put it on our list. But what, they're, what they were saying in the interview, what their hope was, is that it would get on TV, it would get national news, it would get the attention of the mothers of America. They are like, the mothers of America get shit done. You know what I mean? They got mothers against drunk driving, mm-hmm. and they got all mm-hmm. this other stuff. We don't play around. No, we don't. And if they're afraid that their children are going to go to college and be victims of these of this possible group, maybe they would get their attention. So that was one of their hopes. And they were trying to get as many of these cases classified as homicides as they possibly can. Because right now, they're not open investigations. But once they're open, it's their hope they can start linking all of these things together, and then they can start bringing up what they have. Does that make sense? So I think they're keeping some of it, it close does. to the vest. And they're not sharing it with everyone. Some of the key points that I wrote down that keep this theory alive year after year after year are these. The smiley face symbols and other graffiti marks that they say they have thousands of photos of, documenting these for when they can apply them to open investigations like I just mentioned. They absolutely believe that these uh, symbols are the gang's way of taunting the police. Really not unlike the Zodiac, right? We've seen this before, Mm -hmm. the taunting and the leaving messages and kind of wanting to take credit but not really wanting to take credit but kind of it's like their signature mm-hmm. and I should note Gilbertson is also a gang crime expert so he understands the graffiti and markings that they are finding and his expertise is very much a big part of their case uh, the second thing is the presence of the GHB they claim that it was found in the majority of cases they're investigating so this is why and I mentioned you know guys you need to be careful with your drinks. You need to get on board with being being very careful about who you're taking drinks from and I know that's that's not a normal thing for you guys to have to worry about, but you know, even women aren't as careful as they should be, but you can never be too careful. So, start thinking about that, especially if you live in the north or midwest, apparently. That's us. <laughs> yeah, that's us. The victim profile that I mentioned in the interview, Gannon cites this. This was interesting to me. That of 40, that 45 of the now over 350 suspicious cases they have filed were biochemical engineers. Like, think about that. How that's, many, what was the number? That's very sus- specific. 45 of, of the now over 350 cases that they have were some type of engineer as their major. Which is crazy. But yeah, but biochemical. Correct. That's very different than... Mm-hmm. Other kinds of engineers. Right. Especially considering... But it's pretty specific, right? So now no, that's, saying, very, that's very, very specific. Very specific. So now we're saying that now this type of major makes you more susceptible to drink and party and end up drowning in a body of water? I don't think so. That's crazy. That's just too coincidental for me. That's too much. I would say that is probably the largest that's like, a big red flag, flag for me. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Because um, what were they working on? What did they know? Well, there are just too many factors. They say that 350 plus cases is what they have. Yeah, that's right. 350 are the work of the killer or killers. And um, at least, and then he said later in the interview that at least 75% are connected. And that's an incredibly high number. So they obviously know not all of them are because there's so many factors. It could be intentional. It could have been suicide. Oh. It could have been an accident. In some cases could have been another one-off murder. Yeah. It could have been, gosh, who knows, could have been a copycat killer out there at some point. It could have just there, been. There's a, yeah, a million ways sideways. Some what poor it could kid be. drinks or does drugs and he's dead in a dorm room and nobody knows what to do. And so and they, they go, throw him oh, in the just throw him in the river. And then he's another statistic. So there's, I'm sure there's several of those that you have to weed out and that's hard right how do you do that so the remains of the victims are also not consistent with drowning i'll bring that one in there as a point oxygen brings to light the specific case in which 23 year old young man named dakota james was found in the ohio river and although he had experienced minimal decomp he had been missing for 40 days 40 days is a really long time the investigators said they spoke with the harbor patrol as well the ones who pulled him from the water and they said they immediately recognized him because his body was pristine, and he looked exactly like his missing poster. So he wasn't blooded? No. So after 40 days, he looked like... What was like... in his stomach? See, I have, I have no so idea. many I questions. Know, don't I'm you sorry. Wish we could just... Yes, absolutely. I'm sure a lot of people have questions. 40 days? 40 days. Doesn't you matter. You are going to be blown up. Yeah. No. It's... Nobody's going to recognize you. No, you can't be in the water that long and and have someone recognize you from a photo. No. So that's what they're saying. I mean, they truly believe these men are being abducted and held for a period of time before they even enter the water. I wonder why. I don't know. Because there's no sign of torture. Right. Right. There was, there was maybe signs of possible ligature marks on one of the victims that I read, but it wasn't consistent. One out of 300. Correct. So that he could have been in a different case altogether. So, yeah, right, what are they, why? Why are they? Why are they keeping them? Oh, that's so crazy. Right? What do you, I mean, the, the theories for that could be all across the board. Who knows? I must know. I know. I know. We all must know. Um, so, also, the bodies appear to be staged. Some of them. We talked about Chris already with his arms, you know, found crossed over his uh, over his chest, another possible victim was found with his head and shoulders sticking out of the water as if he was just going in to swim. And these are a few examples that the men say it screams homicide, right? His head and shoulders are sticking out mm-hmm. where bodies float. Yeah, right. And so, so what was maybe holding his feet down. I know, right? There's all these questions that I had. This is why I listened to the interview. I was hoping that there would be I'm more like, questions. Oh my gosh, I know. I, I so want to call them up and ask them. <laughs> I want to ask them all I'm these like, things. GHB, how do people's heads stay above water when they're dead? Yeah, I mean, unless and he was stuck on something or his feet were yeah, in you know, mud. Like, you or, don't stand upright. Right, no, you don't. You don't. It's just it's very strange. But that's what they said. They said it screamed homicide. Like, that was a quote. The investigators looked into patterns and statistics as well. They find it incredibly odd that these clusters of drownings all happen in the frigid temps of winter in these specific Midwestern and Northern states. It's freezing. People don't typically go near water or want to swim in these temperatures. I mean, you would think there would be similar clusters in the warmer summer states, but there aren't. And it seems that winter time is the norm and not even during the summer here. So these things were happening in the winter and not so much in the summer. And then again, right down in Florida or those places like that, they're not seeing anything like this. There's more water down there. Yeah, but I feel like Midwest boys are not afraid of water. Maybe. Or could it be hypothermia? Maybe that just gets you quicker. And so if it was warm, you'd be able to figure out a way out of the water or you yeah. would eventually wash up. Because they're already and be intoxicated. Okay. Maybe. College boys can... I mean, I don't want to be stereotypical, but... No, you're right. They drink a lot. They do. They do. But I'm still... I mean, I'm, I'm embracing everything about this This it's conspiracy theory. It's enough to but... really talk about, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely a question. So so who knows? They, they also say they couldn't even find links to these happenings back in the 70s and 80s when the, le- the legal drinking age was younger. So not even in this area in the 70s and 80s was this happening. This just started happening in the 90s, the late 90s. So that was another thing that they looked at, which I'm glad because that was another question that I had. 
The retired investigators say, of course, that they won't rest until they find the people responsible. And there are so many of these alleged smiley face murders that maybe there's something to this. Like I said, I just feel like maybe there are. Maybe some are accidents, like I said, or suicide could be. It's more common than we think, unfortunately. I also think there's a very big possibility that they're maybe not necessarily by the group, like I said, maybe partying gone wrong or even copycat killers or things like that. So, I mean, these are all different things that could be possible. Now, one of the things that I had read at the very last minute, right before I came over, because I was still (laughs) going through my notes, is that I was reading that they think that they've found them on the dark web Hmm. which is another thing I'm sure you were thinking just like me how are these people communicating and they believe that each city has its own cell of people working and they're constantly recruiting people into this group this is what they're saying and I don't know what they're constantly recruiting the killers or the victims into the group the the killers the killers and from what I read it it was like they believed that there would be maybe a group of 12, maybe a cell of 12 in a city, and five would go out and they would do something like this. They would abduct, who knows what they do with them later, kill them, put them in the river, and then the next one would be done by another five people. But they were all, this is just something they've been bouncing around. I don't know how much they know into this, Mm because again, I don't think they're sharing everything that they've found. They said it could be anything from a gang initiation to hate crimes for getting these people recruited, I guess. But they were just saying that the level of sophistication is greater than what they ever imagined. And that they know that there's a dark web and they know that there's surveillance and counter surveillance of these of these victims, of these people that they're stalking on purpose and profiling and, and taking. And they're just saying how There's so much posted online these days. You can find out anything about anybody. So you go online to a university and you find a roster. Do any of the victims know each other? It didn't. You don't know that. It didn't. I don't. That's just so It didn't put a link of, but I want to see it all. I want to see the board with all the dots. Right, right. With all the pictures and the the lines and the dots and the cities. Who knew who and And whose parents did what and what's going on. Who were these parents and these parents and what was his and major and who was his girlfriend and was he engaged? Yes. Like, I wanted to see it all. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I me agree. too. I, I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't see enough One to connect the way that board. I wanted. Yes. Thank you. I mean, we could create our own board. We could do that on our birthday weekend. <laughs> we could sit down and <laughs> Or we could board. watch the oxygen show. Yeah. I think I'd rather watch somebody else telling me what's going on than me trying to figure it all out. But, right? I thought this was definitely something that... I appreciated that it made me really think. Oh, good. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, because I honestly will tell you that I went into it going, eh, I don't think. Well, and I think that's why I've never really gone into the smiley face mm-hmm. rabbit hole is right? because it's so very vague in so many different directions that I, mm-hmm. I never, I never gave myself that time but so what are the biggest things that make you think this could be real the major they're majors yeah that was one of my yeah i had never read that before i came across that one one, um like in a recent article maybe they came across something or knew something or they were getting pulled into a field obviously Mm -hmm. that's biochemical which is very different than you know an engineer is building a bridge, right? But like, why? Why specifically? Oh my this? gosh! Are you kidding me? The biochemical, a biochemical engineer, like yeah, no, the but stuff I... that they're working on these days. Oh, like, absolutely. In the labs is just if you know something, I don't know, you know something you shouldn't know. Maybe like they're they're biochemical engineers, so they're working in the lab and they're working on. Oh, some maybe sort I'm... of. I don't want to say vaccine, but I want to say like. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Right. Right. Or maybe they met someone who was working on something who wanted their research right. or their insight, or maybe they were trying to be recruited to work on a project. 
And they said no, so they put him in the but river. They said no, and they were like, you know too much, or maybe yeah. they were like, no, so no. Well, since you said no, you wouldn't wait part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I've seen the movies, I know. Right, you know. I do. So yes, now I, I, um, I know what you're So saying. I think that's probably the biggest thing. Drunk college boys drowning in bodies of water, I'm not surprised. No, I mean, not really. But so the, I, I feel like there could be a portion of them that is that true. That is what happened. The thing that really gets me is the fact that it's in this, it's in, it's clustered and it's in this area, but these statistics do not carry through the rest of this country. Or is it because all the statistically lakes are up here? Midwest <laughs> has the largest drinking population oh, oh. in the country? Really? Well. Okay, there's another statistic you got to throw in there too, but so there's a reason. There's reasons why. Okay, and you know you asked if all of these were white, Caucasian males. Yes, and I did come across one little blurb, and I can't remember where. I know it was in one of my sources, so I can say this, <laughs> but it was um, a younger um, African American journalist who also felt that one of the cases recently, and I can't remember what year. So I'm just going to say recently. It could have been in the last 10 years. I can't, I can't remember. I'm thinking it was probably more like the last five. But something like this happened, and he was reporting on it, and he brought into it the smiley face killer. And I know that, that they're telling people, like, don't do that. Why would you? Because mm-hmm. they don't want to. They just, I don't think they want to add fuel to the fire. Well, I don't think they have a whole lot to stand on. Right. No, they don't. They really don't. I mean, especially if the FBI is not involved, and they're saying Correct. we don't want anything to do and with it. And who gave it the smiley face killer? The media. Okay. So, oh, and that burns me. But doesn't well, it? Yeah. yeah, the detectives mm-hmm. were saying, he goes, ah, I called it, he said, when they asked me, what it, what do we call this? He said, I called it the university murders, mm-hmm. is what he Because it's killing young boys. Correct, in his mind. And then they said, no, no, we need something. Give us a symbol. Give us something. Give us something. And they said, well, there is the smiley face. And so now they're the smiley face killers, mm-hmm. right? And it's just and we blows know up that. and we do. But... The thing that was interesting to me, too, is that they only gave him the smiley face, but they had other things that they're not sharing. So there's maybe other... Maybe a smiley face doesn't mean so much by itself, but if it's accompanied by something, like another tag or another number Mm -hmm. or something, maybe it means something then. I'm also intrigued by, obviously, the body's lack of composition, decomposition. Mm -hmm. So... Well, yeah. Being gone for 40 days... And I don't know about the temperatures of the water and all of that stuff, but, but it's still, still 40, water. 40 days in the water, no matter what kind of water it is. Yeah. There's so, a lot. There's a lot to this. There's a... It's, there, it's definitely something that I think you can't completely say, shut it down. This isn't... This isn't something... This isn't... We don't want to go here. Because you know what? Regardless of whether this is a real thing or not, some of these are probably murders, and they need to be solved, and there needs to be someone brought to justice for what or, they did. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. No matter what, all of these college men have died. Yeah. Yeah. Like, whether it be we need to educate them on drinking. <sighs> we need to put up some fences. We need to keep them away from bodies of water. To... We need to say, watch your drink. Like, no matter what, there's a lot of lives lost here. Mm-hmm. And no, we, there are. And we need to figure out why. There are. And then and it makes me... Definitely going to keep looking into this. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I'm going to keep following it for sure. We're going to do an update, Tara. I will give an update. Maybe and if next we can year. feed in, fit in this oxygen special that you're talking about into our... Uh, into Birthday our snack day, day? <laughs> absolutely. Well, yes. we will, absolutely. Cause you know, I don't know, but just cause uh, the more you know, the safer you are. The more you know, the safer you are. Yeah. The um, the families though, like my heart goes out to the families who probably don't feel they have closure at all. They probably feel that. Oh. Well, and 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 when you get down to it, no family or no mom, no dad. Or brother or sister wants to to think that this could have been prevented by. Do you know what I'm saying? No one wants to think their loved one was intoxicated and, intoxicated wandered, and wandered into a body of water and just went to take a take a pee in the river and, fell in. and mm-hmm. fell in and died. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to think that. So mm-hmm. they have a finger to point to. They have someone to blame, mm-hmm. but there's still no closure. So 
I get that. Yeah. But, wow, I don't want to end it on, like, a somber note like that, but I didn't want to not say something about the families that I feel no, they're my... going through absolute torture for all of these years, probably wondering. Because I don't think this is something that's going to get resolved in... Quickly. No. This is going to... Yeah. I agree. I agree. No, and... My heart goes out to, to the family members because no matter whether it's an accident or murder, it doesn't it doesn't make your loss any any no. less painful. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, but I guess if you have a definitive answer, you can maybe feel like you can move on and Closure. accept it. But if you don't, and there's like this boogeyman out there that's taking our children's lives, then that's terrifying and... It gives you it gives you something that you're hanging on to for as long as it takes to get answers. Will you definitely shut out the Halloween uh, theme with uh, <laughs> some rock star quality here with your urban legend conspiracy theory? I don't I don't know what else to call it. Yeah, it, def- thank you. it gave me a lot to think about. That's good. That's good. Hopefully, which you can I sleep which I really like. I will. Uh, this one I think I can sleep a lot. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, good. Well, until next time. And our, our theme for November is serial killers, correct? Um, it's, well, because they're, they're born in November. Most November is the birth month of serial the killers. birth month of serial killers. So, if you are married to a November birthday, beware. Mm-hmm. When I open... <laughs> Maybe we'll post some November birthdays so you can match them up and see if you uh, share one with a serial killer. Oh my gosh, that would be crazy. <laughs> Until next time, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Bye-bye.